In September 1878, Thomas Edison made an important announcement to the press. He claimed that he had invented something that would change the lives of millions of people, the incandescent light bulb. The journalist couldn't wait a second longer to see the brilliant invention. Yet, there was one little problem. Edison had, indeed, made the invention, but it wouldn't stay lit for longer than a few minutes. Someone else would panic in that situation, but definitely not our hero. Thomas Alva Edison spent his childhood in Port Huron, Michigan, where his mother homeschooled him. He read a lot and organized his first chemistry experiments in his parents' basement. To fund the experiments, the future famous inventor got his first job at the age of 12. His task was to sell snacks, newspapers, and other goodies to train passengers. He decided to make his own news and publish the first newspaper printed on a moving train, the Grand Trunk Herald. The train was running between Port Huron and Detroit, and the young man had some free time at the destination point, which he spent at the public library. He started a lab in the baggage car of his train. His experiments became the reason he was fired from his first job. Edison then got a new job as a telegraph operator. This experience later inspired many of his first inventions. He was fired from this job as well for the same reason, his experiments. Then, he started traveling around the country, working at different offices. After another demotion because of a prank in Boston, Edison decided to quit for good and dedicate himself to his inventions. He managed to convince people to invest in his first projects. At 22, he patented his first invention, a vote counting device. Edison thought it would simplify the voting process as representatives wouldn't have to shout yay or nay, but flip a switch instead. It never took off because the legislators didn't like it. Another one was Stock Ticker, a gadget that received up-to-date stock price information from the stock exchange and displayed it at various locations. It wasn't a success, and the inventor soon went broke and moved to New York. There, he landed a job at Western Union after fixing the master ticker tape machine in just two hours. His boss offered a lump sum for all his new inventions and improvements to the equipment. The future science star finally got enough money to start his own workshop. He got married to one of his employees and moved to Menlo Park, New Jersey with his wife. It was a perfect setting for a one-of-a-kind lab that was just like a magical workshop for Edison and his crew of muckers, as he called them. The inventor soon realized just improving the telegraph wasn't enough for him, so he decided to create a machine that could record sound as well. He built a contraption that turned the vibrations of speech into grooves on a piece of paper. At the age of 30, he first showed that machine in use as he recorded the first two lines of Mary Had a Little Lamb into the device and played it back using a hand crank. The uh, first words I spoke in the original phonograph, a uh, little piece of practical poetry. Mary had a little lamb, its feet were quite as slow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. This was the official birth of the Edison speaking phonograph. The same year, he whipped out an improved microphone transmitter, helping refine the telephone. Edison became famous all around the world and soon earned the title of the Wizard of Menlo Park. People would come to the area just to see his phonograph in action. The wizard didn't plan to stop there and decided to create the perfect light bulb. Electric light bulbs weren't anything new by the middle of the 19th century. One early type relied on the vapor of carbon rods heated by a battery. It had to be lit by hand and was unreliable, flickering, hissing, and burning out fast. Other types were way too expensive and impractical. By the autumn of 1878, Edison had invented his electric light bulb, but he still didn't know how to regulate the temperature of the filament inside it. The bulb would overheat and the filament melted down after a couple of minutes. There was a real competition going on between inventors from North America and Europe to become the first to patent their own electric inventions. Edison told the New York Sun he had got it covered, and now journalists wanted to see a demonstration. Rumors about the invention spread around the world and even caused a financial crisis in London, where gas shares plummeted. 
Edison's friend urged him to start a British-based electricity company to make some profit out of his invention. He already had all the publicity an inventor could dream of, so it would be a success. Edison knew his invention wasn't quite ready yet, but he wasn't about to let that stop him. In November, he had a devious plan up his sleeve. He invited journalists to his Menlo Park lab for a private demo of the new light bulb. They got a glimpse of its magical glow, marveled at its brilliance. And before they could even blink, Edison swiftly whisked them away so they would be out of the room long before the bulb burned out. The wizard's plan worked like magic. The press fell head over heels for the light bulb. They raved about its clarity, its beauty, and how it didn't assault their delicate eyeballs like those harsh electric arc lights. They could even see the veins in their own hands and the tiniest details on their fingernails. The newspapers hailed it as perfection, and Edison kept up the charade. He even told other journalists that the bulb on display would burn forever, almost. By October 1879, a year after showing it to the journalists, Edison and his team managed to create a light bulb that could last for 14 and a half hours. It had a filament made of uncoated cotton thread. Edison presented the invention to the public on New Year's Eve that year. He didn't stop there and kept experimenting to find the perfect filament. The one made from bamboo made the lamp burn for up to 1,200 hours. It became the standard for the next 10 years. He also made a whole bunch of other inventions to make the light bulbs more practical. A better pump to remove air from the bulb and the Edison screw, which is now the standard socket fitting for light bulbs. He also wanted to improve the production of electricity and developed the first commercial power utility and the first electric meter to keep track of how much power customers used. Several years later, Edison moved from Menlo Park to New Jersey and built a grand new lab that was supposed to become the world's first true research facility. There, he created the alkaline storage battery, commercial phonograph, which was a sound reproduction device, and founded the motion picture industry. Edison had a genius idea to spice up the phonograph by combining it with a device that created an illusion of motion in a sequence of photos. He worked on the project together with his employee interested in photography. In 1888, they created something out of this world a camera and a viewing instrument known as a kinetograph and the kinetoscope. As they tried to sync up sound with motion, they ran into a wall of difficulty. So they waved goodbye to the dream of linking sound and motion and opened the silent movie era. Five years later, they opened the world's first motion picture stage, the Black Maria. The following year, kinetoscopes became a true sensation. They had peepholes for one person at a time to stare at moving images. The movie selection was pretty impressive, with some intriguing titles. A Newark Athlete. Fred Ott's Famous Sneeze. Sanda, The Strongman. What Happened on 23rd Street and the world's first cat video. I guess Edison deserves the title of the unofficial grandfather of YouTube. Edison patented a total of 1,093 inventions in the US and remains one of the most famous scientists of all time.